here, I'm going to be showing you how to do the drawing sheets for your first travel mug. And you can use this video to also do the drawing sheets for your own travel mug once you have it made. So this will be one of the last videos that will be posted for the DCG project this year. Okay. So what I've done in the background is I have the assembly of the mug opened. Okay. So this video will show you how you should be able to use this video for all the travel mugs and your own travel mug. Don't be waiting for me to put up a video for travel mug two or travel mug three to do the drawings. That will not be happening. This video is plenty good for all the travel mugs. It's the same concept, the same thing. You just follow the same system with your own travel mug. Now, so the first thing I want to do is make sure the assembly is opened. I go to file. I go to new. I go to drawing. I click OK. Now, it's very important at this exact moment that you make sure to pick A3 ISO. If you do not pick A3 ISO right now, you'll have to redo all the drawing sheets again, technically. So there's a couple of options here. You make sure you pick A3 ISO. If A3 ISO is not an option, go to Browse and search in all the options there. You will eventually find A3 ISO landscape. I click OK. And for the moment, I'm just going to push this red X up here on the right hand side because I need to remove these borders off the page. I right click anywhere I like on the page and I go to edit sheet format. I click the little arrow here just beside sheet one. I then click the arrow again beside sheet format. And right down here at the bottom, I right click border one and I push delete border. I then click yes. To remove the rest of the border, I highlight it with my mouse by dragging the mouse over it. I then just push delete on the keyboard. And now you have a blank A3 page. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the school crest in onto our page. It looks quite well. So I'm going to go into the internet. And I've already got the school crest here. I'm going to just right click on the school crest. I'm going to go to save image as. And I'm going to save it as crest. And I'm going to save that in downloads or somewhere that you know you can get to. And I click save. Minimize that. So we're back in SolidWorks now. I go up to the top. I go to insert. I go to picture. I go to downloads where I just save the crest. Click crest. Click open. The crest will now appear in on the page. Now I need to make that a lot smaller. So I'm going to reduce that way down in size. And I'm going to probably put that up in the top right hand corner up here. Once you have that done, and it doesn't have to be that big, so that's plenty in size. So you can see the measurements I have here over on the left hand side. I have it roughly 30 mil by 30 mil, something like that. If you want to use that as, as a guideline for how large it should be. And once I have that done, I click the green tick. I then click this button here to exit sheet format. Now I'm ready to start doing my drawings. So I go to model view up here at the top. I click, if this is not here, you'll have to browse first, but I'm looking for my travel mug. And I'm now going to click preview. Okay. We are now starting to do drawings of our travel mug. I'm going to pick see through detail, which is the second option here. I'm then going to click use custom scale. And I'm going to use a custom scale of one is to two. I then click here anywhere I like. I then go to the right. Another image will appear. I click again. And then because the computers are in American, because all it works in the American system, it's backwards for our plan. I'll have to go up with the plan for the moment, but I'll drag it down once I'm finished. So it's going to put it up here off the sheet. Once I have that done, I click the green tick on the left hand side. And I'll come back. I click the orange box on the outside and I drag that plan that it's underneath my front elevation. I then go to annotation. And I go to smart dimension. Now I'm only going to show one or two measurements, but you will need to put quite a lot of measurements onto these drawings. I'm going to zoom in on this. I'm going to get the height of the mug by maybe clicking the very top, clicking the very bottom. There's the height of the mug. Equally, I might get the height of just the bottom part by clicking this line here, this line here, putting that measurement out. 
You can use the other views as well. So maybe I might click this radius here. And I might do one circle down here in plan. So it's going to pick up a circle down here in plan. And again, show that radius. And it is as easy as that, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, to get the um, measurements onto your drawings. Literally click and drop the measurement nice and neatly around the outside. You need to put as many the measurements as you possibly can onto them three views. You will not put too little. Or you will, sorry, apologies. You will not put too much. So keep putting dimensions on satin. There's a good few dimensions put onto your drawings. Once you have that done, click the green tick. Now, next thing I'm going to do is over here, I'm going to bring in a 3D view of the assembled mug. So I go back to view layout. I go back to model view. I go back into the same assembly. And I click the 3D button here. And you'll see that the mug is appearing in 3D. I scroll down, I go to full color. And if, the, if, it's, if you can't see it, you need to click the preview button here, make sure that's turned on. Then I go down, I'm going to go to use custom scale, and I'm going to change it to one is to one, which is full scale. And I'm going to leave that in here somewhere. Once I have that done, I'm going to click the green tick. The next thing I'm going to bring in is the exploded view of the assembled mug. So I go to model view again. Again, I go into assembly. This time I click the drop down arrow underneath default and I pick exploded view. And I click the box here that says show in exploded state. Now I have a couple of exploded states to pick from. I'm just going to pick the first option. I then click the 3D button. I then click full color. I then click use custom scale and I change it to one is to two. And I'm going to drop that somewhere here to show the exploded view. Again, I click the green tick. You put no measurements on the 3D drawings. Instead, what you can do is you can go to annotation, you can go to note, and you can label what each part is called. For example, I can click here on the main body. An arrow will be now attached to my mouse. I can drag it wherever I feel like. I can drop it, and I can type in the likes of main body. You might also say what the main body is made from. Main body made from ceramic. Main body made from stainless steel. Main body made from aluminium. Whatever you want to say for your part. So I would always say the name and what it's made from. On the 3D drawing, I would go to Note. And for example, I would take a label off the handle. And I would say, handle made using swept boss base. or even the same sweep. That's what you'd use on SOLIDWORKS to make that part. And then just push enter on your keyboard, or so you can push the red X here on this, click anywhere you like. And the, the same label will be stuck to your mouse. To remove that same label, just push escape. And you can put that label afterwards, you can move it around. You might say the same here, you might take an arrow out saying main lid, use the dome. Um, you might call this here Revolve Boss Base made from cork. And you can use these exploded views to also label each part individually too. Put a good few notations onto your drawing. Now, any space that you have left afterwards, try and keep the bottom left-hand corner blank because there will be a stamp from SOLIDWORKS that will appear that you cannot remove. Just be careful that. Maybe just keep this area down here blank for as long as you can. Um, but here is a bit of space. What I kind of do in those situations, if I feel like there is room, I go back to my view layout, I go back to my model view, I go to browse, and what I might bring in maybe is just maybe one particular part of the object. So I might just bring in the um, lid, and I click open, and I'm going to just show that there in the orthographic, so I'm going to bring it down here, I'm going to leave it in the correct view it's in now, I'm going to put it in full color, going to use custom scale but change it to one is to two it's going to click here I'm going to go down with it as well and just push escape on my keyboard so push escape to stop drawing it and then i can then move that over here a bit and you can show some more detail of a particular part of your project okay so you're looking for notations on the 3d drawing explaining 
the material they're made from and how they were made in SOLIDWORKS. Looking for measurements on your orthographics. You can use this to put more measurements onto these that maybe you can't get from the um, complicated orthographic here. You can put more measurements onto these parts. Okay, that's sheet one. To do sheet two, you click the little option down here in the bottom left hand, add sheet. Now you're back to the same problem again, there's borders on this sheet. So we right click, we go to edit sheet format. You click the little arrow here beside sheet format. You right click border two, you push delete border. You click yes. You then highlight what's left, push delete on your keyboard. Again, you go to SOLIDWORKS, you go to insert. Sorry, so you go to insert. You go to picture. So what I'm bringing in is the crest again. So I'm in downloads for my one, click crest, click open. Scale it down that it's roughly 30 by 30 on the left hand side. So if you want, you can type in exactly 30 here and 30 there. Then you can drag that up, put it in the top right hand corner of the page again. Once you have that done, click the green tick. Then click this blue button here to exit the sheet. Now we're going to go to model view. We're going to go to assembly of mug one. And this time I'm going to change from default to cutaway. I'm going to put it into 3D. I'm going to change it into diametric down here. Now, I'm not happy with that view actually because I can't see the cutaway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go down here to the bottom. I'm going to go to SOLIDWORKS, going to go into the assembly. I'm going to turn on cutaway here. So I'm going to go to my display states, configuration manager. I'm going to go to cutaway, double click cutaway. I'm going to spin this around using the mouse into a view that I can see the internal detail of the mug. So something like that. I then go back down here to SOLIDWORKS again at the bottom. I go back into my sheet. Let update. I go back into model view again. I go back into assembly. I change it to cut away, so make sure cut away is on. And I click current model view. Now it's the exact same view as what I just moved the mouse with. That's a better view. Um, I then go with full color. And I'm going to go use custom scale. And I'm going to change it to one is to one. I'm going to put that up here in the top right hand side. I'm going to click the green tick. I'm also going to go to model view. I'm going to go into assembly again. I'm going to bring in the exploded view again, show an exploded state. 3D, diametric or trimetric, the top option. Wire detail this time. So that's the second option. Use custom, change it, one is to one, and we're going to drop that here. Now, if it moves over and you're not happy with it, you can click the crosshairs after and you can move it into the right position. Click the green tick. Now, if one is to one doesn't fit because it's a different type of mug, change it to one is to two. Now we're going to go to detail view. And I'm going to draw a circle with detail view around maybe the inside of the mug to show what it looks like. So I'm just dragging the mouse. So you click once, drag the mouse out, a circle will appear around it. And when you move your mouse down, you'll have a detail view of that. Drop that anywhere you like that's close. Now you'll see that detail A appears, scale two is to one. You can drag it up a bit close by clicking the text. If you double click that text, you can now type in extra. So I'm going to leave that detail A scale one is to one inside of mug is what I'm going to add in. Push anywhere you like outside, then push, that's it done. Um, you can e even show a detailed view here of all the seal and everything, how it works with the mug and how it's in place. Or you can go over here and you can do a detailed view of this exploded view. So I go to detail view. I might draw a sketch around or a circle around here. I'm going to go over here to the left hand side. And I'm going to change it to full color. The detail view is now in full color. And I'm going to leave it at scale one is to one. So change, change to one is to one. I'm going to drop that here. 
just underneath. And again, I'm going to grab that text to bring it up closer. I'm going to double click it. Just after one is the one, I just click or push right or left on my keyboard. Um, I'm going to show, I might call this um, showing location of seal. Uh, push escape on your keyboard and you're done. And you can move that text in a bit from the right hand side. That's what this page is about now. It's about doing detail views and commenting on what those detail views are and changing the detail views to full color. And sometimes you might want to change the detail views to wire detail. Another thing you can do is when you go to annotation and you go to note, you can give this a title. For example, I can just click here without the arrow. So move your mouse so that the black arrow doesn't appear. If I click here, a box will appear, and I might call this cutaway of travel mug. Push escape on your keyboard. Push escape again on your keyboard to stop writing the same text. And you can then move that text somewhere even underneath it, beside it, wherever, to show what it is. Another thing that looks quite well, and this is the last thing on the video, is when you have all your detail views done, you can go to sketch, you can go to line, and you can click a line on the edge of that circle and click a line on the edge of this circle. Now you're linking the detail views together. Push escape on your keyboard, to stop drawing lines. So you can see that that line matches up to this and you can do the same over here. I could go to line, I could click line. I can go from this circle to this circle here and push escape on my keyboard, and that lines up that as well. So loads of detail views on this. There's not enough there now. I've only done two. You need to put in at least another three, if not four, detail views onto that page. And then sheet one, again, has your completed 3D, your exploded view. You're explaining on this 3D how it's made. You're explaining on your exploded view what material it's made from. And then on the 2D drawings, you're putting in all the measurements. Once you have that done, you go to File, you go to save, uh, go to save all, no matter what it says there, click save all, and then leave it as assembly one, travel mug one, drawings. Once you have that done, you need to email this then to yourself that you have a safe copy, email it to me. Make sure you have more than one copy on the desktop because at this point now, folks, things get very, very sensitive in solid work. It's very easy for your work to be totally lost at this exact moment. So you need to make sure that you're being very safe and double saving all your work and emailing it to yourself that you have access to that no matter what happens to the PC. Okay, so that's the end of the video. So that video shows you how to do drawings for the travel mug for both your first mug and the mug that you're now going to make yourself. There will be one more video next week showing how to do PhotoView 360s. And that is the last page of your project. Okay, thanks very much. Bye.